the Beach FM Business Lunch Show, brought to you by Placemakers, Kapiti and Orofenua. Together, we're building New Zealand. Welcome back to the Business Lunch Show on Beach FM 106.3. And let's talk art now. You've probably driven past this store in Otaki many a time. Now let's talk to the man behind the art. It is Hohepa Thompson, better known as Hori. Kia ora, bro. Kia ora, how are you? How are you going? Very well, my man. How are you doing at this time? Uh, better now. We're kind of um, we're back into the, the gallery and we're um, open. So, um, yeah, it's way better than it was a couple of months ago. <laughs> definitely is, man. Definitely is. Before we get into the COVID talk, um, let's hear the story. Yep. How, how long you've been around? Um, you know, how far does your art go back? Uh, so, I started this in 2012 um basically i was kind of ex- just fell upon it accidentally i was doing more street work and uh someone kind of said oh have you ever thought to kind of do this uh as as kind of uh clothing and i was like oh no nah. so i kind of fell into it accidentally and won a couple of competitions and then was kind of thrusted uh upon me and now I'm kind of doing it full time yeah so so how did a p- passion become a business um I always like envisioned doing something creative um it just took me a while to kind of uh work it all out um I mean business wise I'm not so savvy <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I mean I kind of have that entrepreneurial kind of um I suppose you know, part of me, um, but like all the logistics and stuff like that, I'm not great with, but it's, um, I have a partner that does that stuff for me. So me is the kind of, um, the other end of it, which, um, which is really nice because we get to work together. Awesome stuff, mate. Where did you draw your inspirations from, uh, early on in your work? Because it has, uh, it has developed and progressed throughout the time, but where, who, who were those early inspirations for you? In terms of artists and yeah, that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, where, you, where you drew your light from kind of thing. Uh, so I look up to, there's kind of a few Māori artists that are, look, that are kind of, have always been inspired by like Shane Cotton uh, as one of them, uh, Ralph Hortide and Michael Padikofa. They're kind of the three kind of, they're like the Dan Carters, <laughs> kind of Richard McCall's of the art world for me. Awesome. So I'm just like, um, I've always kind of looked up to those guys and um and then kind of tried to develop my own kind of style um and own own kind of path um but a lot of my works in the beginnings were kind of based on on colonization and kind of uh especially on stereotypes and issues that affect our maori so quite raw issues to deal with um but it was the point of difference that I was, um, and with just my personality, that's always that questioning people and questioning things that kind of, um, that was the point of difference and in, in, in why it kind of was, it, why it's probably a bit more successful now, yeah. yeah. Well, definitely sharing your culture and, and your stories has is, is been a centerpiece of your art. Uh, how, how did you find those early days uh, speaking your mind and, 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 and putting your messages across? What kind of kickback did you get? Or was it, was it um, people un- more understanding of what you were putting across? I think um, earlier it was hard because I was a lot younger. Um, and it, it was just finding, making sure that the foundation behind and my whakaro and the kaupapa behind the works were solid that I could kind of stand from that platform and actually give the message out. I think um, because I was kind of younger and there's that whole kind of, uh, I feel in, in the Māori world, there's a bit of a hierarchy kind of, um, you know, it's like the queer saying, or the, you know, Kuroa saying, hey, you shouldn't be doing that, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, and because I was kind of going against the grain, my, my biggest critics were actually my own whānau and, you know, and and my own people. Um, so, yeah, I think I've been able to, like, during the time, been able to navigate those waters a lot better. Um, in the beginning, I think I was a bit naive 
um, thinking that, you know, everyone was going to be okay with everything. Um, and But now I've kind of, I see myself as sitting in two different worlds, like um, in two different wakas, like skis almost, and um, and kind of, and kind of navigating waters um, that can get quite turbulent at times. But yeah, still trying to kind of figure it out. But yeah, that's just the journey. That is the journey, my man. That is the journey. Hey, let's talk about um, mm. the, those, uh, you speaking a bit louder, tw- 2017, bro Brotuck, Tucky. 2018, you went around the country uh, trying to bring awareness uh, by taking the pee out of everything. Um, where where have you found those drives to make change and and and, and get people to think differently? Um, I think from the name um, Hori, uh, it's it's you know obviously it's a negative derogatory term for Maori, um, and I was given that at school, um, you know, in my form and boarding form, I was one of three Maori kids that were there. And I could speak te reo and kind of grew up with te ao Māori and, and in that world. So, um, and my name was Hohepa, so it was, and I knocked the teeth out. They called me Hori. I hated it. So the whole kind of uh, the whole thing behind the name is taking something on that is kind of negative, um, being able to spin that and um, and do more positive and challenging mahi with that um, underneath that alias. So with the brotaki and um, and that was the same as you know people thought it wasn't mana enhancing for for otaki, but then trying to kind of see it from a positive uh, space, like you know I would use the word bro fifty times a day. It's a brotherly term that I'd use for people, and trying to use that as a more positive way, you know, to to kind of um, to represent a name or a town or whatever. The um the P stuff was actually a lot of the works were quite personal. Um, you know, that you know, I had Fano members that um that were affected by this this drug and, you know, one in particular who kind of, you know, paid the ultimate price and ended up um, you know, being in prison, uh and, you know, taking someone's life. So, uh this was kind of a more of a personal thing, um and it was just this an idea that I thought, well, you know, um, maybe this could work, maybe it couldn't, and um, and yeah, and it, and, it, and it did work in terms of creating awareness around this issue. Um, yeah, and, and and it kind of took off for the month, and um, and and yeah, it was a pretty interesting campaign to run. We always kind of run campaigns, and that's kind of one of the big ones that we've done. Mm. Yeah, that was, it was uh, it was pretty pretty interesting. Looking at everyone's uh, Facebook names, uh, people I've known for the last twenty years, and all the P's are miss, missing from their names. Um, and and it's good to hear that I'm not the only person that walked out of Silverstream with a nickname that they didn't like, um, <laughs> but but has embraced embraced over the years. Hey hey, t- let's talk COVID now. I know you're a free spirit, mate. How did you find it? Ah, uh, to be. Completely honest, I I pretty much hated every minute of it. Um, I I mean, the whole anxiety and uh, and the uneasiness of this time really snuck up on me and bit me in the ass. Um, like I like I didn't think it was going to. But um, the first week was fine, and then by the second kind of third week, I uh, I was in a real bad bad kind of dark place. So. Yeah, I just, yeah, I'm used to be able to, we live a pretty free kind of lump, humble life um, and we're able to kind of go whenever we want to. We don't have hours on our door, so um, we're either there or we're not. And we kind of, for the last three years, have loved that kind of way. Our whole lives are based around our, our kids. So um, we can usually just chuck them in a car and go and that's, that's just the way we always lived. Um, so being being stuck behind the, those gates um, really proved a, a a big challenge for us, um, for me especially. Yeah, we saw a lot of people adapting, um, changing up how they were thinking, how they were creating, um, how they were, they were putting out their product. I know for you, you took on something that you'd never done. 
um, by interviewing um, fellow artists. How did you find that that um, getting getting behind the camera and asking the questions? Um, pretty kind of at the start. I'm a bit fucking ma, but I kind of got <clears throat> you know it was a bit awkward at the start. I mean, I've done a quite a lot of media stuff before, but I think being in front and actually asking questions. It's more to give the the other artists a bit of a chance to um, tell their story, um, especially some of the um, more established artists uh, that kind of people have a view of them in the media but don't actually have an understanding of their personality and who they really are. So it was really cool to kind of get that across to people. Um, and it's just good, you know, um, letting people to kind of see uh, our artists at face value and just like, oh yeah, oh right, these are the, their ideas behind their works. So that was the main kind of um, the main reason, but also just to kind of to kind of do something online and um, and kind of you know create um, a presence online that we kind of for the first two three weeks we weren't doing, but that, that was the main idea behind it. And um and you've turned to a, a, a turned to another track uh, where you have an exhibition coming up this Sunday and it's going to be online. Do you think that possibly could be a way that uh, more art is seen uh, in in the in the future? Um, I know we all love the the personal um, presence of standing there and being part of it, but um you're trying mm. it, trying something new. Do you think uh, it could continue? Yeah, I think it is. I think it's um. You know, I've always been, you know, for a long time, like quite digital, like aware of what can be ha- happen on, like via um, um, the web. So this kind of just, I've never done something like this. It's uh, it's going to be all um, digitally done online. Uh, basically, it's called Homai Ho- Homaru, which is Gimme Shelter, and it. Um, it just talks about shelter and sanctuary and what people kind of how people found that during the lock up. Um, there's some quite dark um, themes. We kind of concentrate on um, kind of Maori male um, suicide rates and and how you know that they're some of the highest uh, in New Zealand and in the world. So quite dark themes to look at, but in true kind of hoary um, fashion, we kind of uh, we just dive straight into them, and um, and just and it is it, it, some of the pieces are quite um, hard to look at, um, but um, it's the messages to to keep people aware, and and if they are feeling in these ways, that they can reach out and and then you've got more mana to kind of if you ha- are having these feelings of anxiety, is to kind of talk talk to someone instead of trying to be that staunch um, person and hold it in, which I think is put on our tani, um, our um, Māori um, men sometimes. Um, but yeah, it's just a, it's just a new, um, a different way that I've, a medium that I haven't really done before. Um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting come Sunday if all the web clips and everything work. <laughs> Amazing, mate. Well, I appreciate your time. Lastly, where can the people find you? How can they get in touch? And the details for Sunday. Uh, so on Sunday, the exhibition will kick off uh, via thehori.co.nz. Uh, it's at 7pm. Um, or you can find us down uh, the main road of Ōtaki. Uh, yeah, it's our gallery, Whareitoi Ōhori. And, um, or you can see us on Facebook or Instagram at, um, at the Hori. Outstanding, mate. Well, keep doing us proud, bro. Keep, uh, but keep uh, throwing out those uh, messages, p- mate. Getting people to change the way they think. I appreciate your time. Hopefully, when I drive past next time, the store will be open and you'll be inside. But otherwise, <laughs> as long as I know you're with the family, being happy, mate. Go well. Yeah, sweet, bro. Thank you, Danny.